Hello, hello friends, it's Danny, and I am back today for the fourth video of my Coloring Cat series. I think this might be the last one. Um, I am starting to do some speed coloring in shorts, so I might color up some cats there so you could look there, but I think that we've covered a wide range. We've done like some patterns, we've done some solids, we've done some grays, we've redone some grays, and then I did do a short coloring up Newton loves tacos. So I think we've covered a lot, but today I want to touch on um, texture. There's lots of different ways you can achieve texture. Um, I'm just gonna show a couple of them. In the description box below, I have linked all of the previous coloring cat videos, as well as my very first video on adding texture, which was right when I started my channel, so it might be a little rusty. I don't know, I still feel rusty. Um, and that one is mainly just adding texture by using the colorless blender with your alcohol markers. I want to show that, but I also want to show you can add some texture with some pencils, or you can also add texture with just your markers. Um, that technique I'm not the best at, but we're gonna give it a go. I thought this little guy was the best for showing these because he has lots of open areas and I left him on there because he's just so cute. So we'll add some to him. Both of these are from this stamp set, which is by My Favorite Things called Cool Cat. I do believe it is retired. So I'm sorry about that, but I know that they have lots of other cute stuff there. I will, well, I'm not gonna speed through the coloring tonight because I want to talk a little bit. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with this little guy here. And to start with, we're just gonna do some very simple basic coloring. Let me grab some colors here. I didn't think this through or I would have already had those out. Sorry about that. All right, so just gonna do his little ears and his little nose and I'm probably gonna do some little cheeks because he looks like he needs some little cheeks. Just gonna do, is some, like I said, some very basic coloring and I'm not gonna go all the way to the edge because I am going to use that colorless blender and it'll make the ink kind of flow. Um, I'm probably gonna cut this, well, I am gonna cut this out, but because of the whiskers, I'm not gonna be able to get like super close and I just said not to do that and that's what I did. Okay, we're not gonna do the colorless blender at the edges then, I guess. But it does really make it kind of flow and bleed, so just be aware of that when you color your image before you do the colorless blender or the alcohol. I haven't done it as often with just like alcohol. You use rubbing alcohol, and I would make sure that it's at least 91% the higher, oh, that wasn't closed, I have little drops now. Anyways, that was exciting. Um, just make sure that it is uh, close, like the higher the percentage, the better it will work. Like I said, I have not done a lot of it, so I'm not like an expert with the alcohol, but I did want to mention it in case you were, you didn't have the colorless blender or um, something like that. I'm going to wait to add that one. So then it's a really simple technique, man. I have like alcohol everywhere. I don't know if that has a leak or what. Sorry, squirrel. Okay, so um, every fabric has a different like texture to it. I love this dishcloth for, for getting like bubbles. And this side is kind of fun. I have a towel that I use. You can just see that texture there. I have a crocheted pot holder that I was given like a lot of them. So I use one of them for this. And then one really cool thing, not for cats, but if you have a piece of old denim in your color up jeans, this technique works fabulous for creating like a jean texture. And I think I do show that on that very first video. So all you do, not spill it everywhere, is you take your colorless blender or your alcohol and you just wet whatever fabric surface you are using going to close that so that I don't lose the spill it and then you're just gonna go and you're just gonna press it down and hold it 
and you're going to press it down and hold it and do it till you get the um, texture you want. As it dries, the texture will appear a little bit more. So you can start to see how he's starting to get a little bit there. I might do that just a little bit more. Let me find the spot that was wet. That's right here. I'm going to do just a little bit more there. So cute. And then I am going to go in with this darkest color just to add some, like, I guess shadows or some definition, whatever you want to call it around the outside. Just kind of keeping that texture so I'm not going to color over it very much or it'll go away. But I just want to kind of blend, soften. Oh, I need to do his tail. I tell you, I'm having a lot of squirrel moments tonight. But you can still see how adorable and how cool it is to get like different patterns there. I think I'm going to leave him just like that. And he looks so cute. And he has that texture and look how easy that was. So that's one, that's like with the dishcloth. I want to do one more that just shows like um, a different pattern real quick. I think we will color his ears and nose. I'm not going to give the cheeks this time. Let's do an orange kitty. All right. That's E95. It's really light. It's really hard to see, I'm sure. So just going to color him up. Not going to worry about going to the edges quite yet. Oh, these cats are so cute. Now I want to make all the cat cards. Which, coloring up these images, I will have a lot to choose from. So there should be some cat cards coming out soon. Um, I am sharing. I share on Instagram. I share on Facebook. Um, I share in my new Facebook group, which I think I have linked down below. Um, if not, I will try to remember to do that. All right. Uh, I want a little bit more. I'm going to leave his face kind of light. We're going to go in just a little bit more. All right. Now I'm going to use this towel because it's just got a, I don't know, a nice texture. And, again, the colorless blender, which is that zero, it says colorless blender. I'm going to get this pretty saturated. I have another one of these because I go in spells where I really like this technique and I use it on everything. And then other times I get lazy and I forget about it. And it does dry relatively quick because it is kind of like alcohol. And I'm just going to press it down and leave it a, hold it a little bit more. So the longer you hold and the, you know, the more you press, the more texture you're going to get. All right, so you can see him. He's all fuzzy. I'm just going to go in and kind of soften those lines. Not going to do a whole lot around his belly where we did that texture, but kind of blend these out, soften the lines a little bit. And he's adorable. And as it dries again, he'll get more and more texture. But there, look at his little belly. And then this one's really drying up, so super cute. But yeah, different materials will have different textures. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do this guy. I think I want him to be a gray kitty. We're going to use cool grays, though. And for him, I'm going to show you how you can make texture with the Colorless Blender marker. So again, it's just a really simple blend. I'm going to have his little face be lighter. I'm going to go back in with those, the ear. I'm going to color it all and then we'll make some of it darker. Just get a... Nice base coat, I guess, like we're painting here. And then I'm going to add just a little, let's see, three, if I could get it the right way. And I want to keep his face 
this top part there kind of light so I'm not I might go just around the edges but I'm not gonna do much whereas here I'm probably gonna do a little bit more I think I will leave the end of his tail light and his little hands and feet all right and then I'm gonna go in with the darkest color the C5 I'm not going to put it up there because, again, I want that to remain kind of light. Just giving a little bit of this darkest color. All right. I'm going to soften those lines up. So I'm going to go back in with that C3. Just kind of soften those lines. No rhyme or reason again. And if you've been watching, you know that I just kind of color whatever way makes me happy. I don't really mess with certain um, shadows and whatnot. That confuses me and steals my joy. No matter how many classes I've taken. I'm just going to, again, smooth this all out. I'm going to add some little grays to those. I am going to get the pink for his ears before I forget. All right, and then we're going to just make some texture with the Colorless Blender marker. And the easiest way to do that, we're just going to do it on this darkest area. You can do short little dots or like stippling or longer. The longer you hold it, the more it's going to show. So keep that in mind. I'll do some bigger ones down here. And it takes a little bit for it to show up because it has to dry. And basically, it's kind of a, a lie when it says it's a blender. It actually removes color. It doesn't necessarily blend it. So, dot it. Going to add some pink to his nosy there. And then it is starting to dry. And you can kind of start to see those little dots are starting to give him a little bit of texture there. So that's another way. Then let's do one, two more real quick ones. Sorry that this is going a little bit longer. Um, maybe we'll only do one more. So the other way, there's two other ways and they're both the same. It's just whatever you choose to do, whether you use markers or pencils. It's basically the same concept as the, um, colorless blender that we just did is like the stippling the little dots to just add some detail and texture I think I do want some little cheeks on this guy I'm gonna go in with that c3 but instead of like color coloring it we're just gonna do lots of little dots this is a little bit more time consuming but in the end, this is also kind of helpful for different hair textures. If you're coloring, you know, like some characters, it just kind of adds a little bit of different texture and different look to it. So, and they all kind of run together, which is good. And then you want to go in Typically, I would do like three or four different markers with this. I'm going to keep the darker ones along the outside. You could go in with like, which I think we might do just to show you. Um, once you get it kind of going, you can go in with other colors. Like I'm going to go in with a brown, I think. And again, it's just little dots. Let me grab a brown real quick. Just going to do E33. And again, just little dots. And kind of make it so he's a little bit more defined there. And then what I like to do is take my lightest color, which is the C1. And then I kind of go over it all to kind of blend them all together. 
I don't like white space showing. Some people do. If you like it showing, you could leave it. Or again, you could go back in with more. You could do the stippling with this lighter color. For time purposes, I'm just going to do that. So I will show you this. So that gives him lots of fun texture. He looks really cool. But then what you can do is you can use both techniques together. Grab our towel here and the colorless blender on it there. And while it's really wet, I'm just going to press it down and hold it. And now also let those colors kind of blend together a little bit more, but add even more texture. So this little guy is all kinds of cute there. He's got lots of different colors. He's got texture. He's fuzzy. I just want to give him a hug. So that gives you some ideas. Again, like I said, you could do the same technique with the pencils, colored pencils. You just want to be able to go in at the end and blend it out. Well, I've never tried it, but so there's our little guys. So there's that first little guy and you can just see that texture in there. This one, I probably would go back with that colorless blender marker and dot him again. He didn't get it very much, but you can see he's kind of lighter and has a little bit. And then this little guy is just so fun. So I hope that that gives you some ideas. I hope you have enjoyed seeing me color up some cats. Again, I think this is the last one in the series. Um, I will be doing, I'm, my goal is to try to start doing shorts of speed coloring every day, but I hate to say that because sometimes my menopausal hormones take over and I don't always follow through and I hate not following through, but that's my goal. We'll see what I achieve. Anyways, thanks so much for stopping by. I hope that you did find this helpful and my next coloring series will be barnyard slash farm animals. Um, that'll probably start in a couple days. Until my next video, go do something for yourself and go get crafty. Bye.